Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Inside the Mind where we talk about online marketing strategy, what it is, why it's important, and why you should care. In last week's episode, we talked about how to make a sale using social media. Then it occurred to me, we've talked about sales, networking, strategy, content development, and key performance indicators, but we haven't talked about one of the most important pieces to the whole equation, which is landing pages the glue that brings this whole online marketing business together. So we're going to Tarantino this mother fluffer and work backwards in part one of this special two-part guide to landing pages. In today's episode, you'll learn about different design techniques, why they work, and why you really need to be focusing on your landing pages. But wait, can't I just sell stuff off my blog? Well, little Tommy, let's look at this from your customer's perspective. Say you're involved in a back-channel chat on Twitter. For this example, we'll just say it's a chat about Twitter tips and you've just happened to write an ebook on the subject. And in this chat, you're on fire. I mean, you're giving super actionable advice left and right, and like every other tweet you come out with gets retweeted by at least 10 to 20 people. Well, it's inevitable that someone will think that what you're saying is spot on. So they go to your profile and click over to your website. Now, in one scenario, they go directly to your homepage, which is kind of generic and untargeting, so they spend about 20 seconds before they click the back button and go back to the chat. And in another scenario, they go to a specialized landing page that acknowledges they're coming from Twitter, gives a little background behind who you are, what you do, and the most recent project, which happens to be an ebook on Twitter tips. It's at this point the person makes a critical decision. Do I buy the book, or do I leave? Now you could argue that there are a number of factors that go into this, but the design of your landing page has a lot to do with it. Now, while there are no hard and fast rules when it comes to designing your landing pages, you must remember that they are used to focus your visitors' attention, present a high degree of message match, and gently guide your users towards their goals with as few negative barriers as possible. Elements like a strong logo can make a significant impact on whether a person can trust you with their credit card or their email address. Headlines, being one of the first things people read, should not confuse or bore, but invite the visitor to take a closer look. Depending on what your landing page is about, try playing with different fonts and come up with something that accurately reflects the message of the page. Trust symbols like third-party verification or Better Business Bureau logos indicate that you've been verified to be secure. Companies like AC Lens saw a 41% increase in conversions once they started using VeriSign in a highly visible location on the page. And while we'll talk about content more in next week's episode, the content has to be there in order for people to learn more about the product. If you skimp on the content, you're sure to lose out on conversions. Things like product descriptions, testimonials or reviews, and guarantees are all big factors in gaining the trust necessary to hand over a credit card or an email address. Make sure too that your videos and images reinforce the wording of the page. Also, including a video of customer testimonials or reviews can have a really positive impact on viewers. Because when you think about it, you can fake text, but it's really hard to fake being someone else over video. And finally, a strong call to action should always stand out on your page and be above the fold. Also, depending on what sort of information you're looking for, your call to action might be right above your button or the button itself. Orange or yellow buttons tend to do a very good job at catching viewers' eyes, so keep that in mind the next time you design your next button. Yeah, yeah, but what about colors? How do I know what I want my color scheme to be? Great question, little Tommy. There have been various tests showing that people associate colors with different feelings. So depending on what you plan on using the landing page for will widely depend on what color scheme you use. Black, for example, is viewed as a powerful and sleek color, while pink is seen as romantic and feminine. I won't bore you with all the details on that. You can just follow the link in the description to read a great article on the subject. Okay, and what about some of the more advanced stuff? Okay, so if you're selling a product, show the product. It seems to make sense, but there are still a ton of companies that fail to do this. Let's take a look at BlackBerry, for example. While their website is beautifully designed, there is very little here that shows their new phone. Oh, wait, there it is. Oh, no, it, it's gone. There's nothing here that gives me a look at what the product actually is, and they're making me look harder than I need to to learn more about their newest device. Apple, on the other hand, shows me the iPhone 4S front and center, and two out of three of the images here show me the different improvements that they've made with this generation of iPhone over all the others. Oh, I get it. What else? Derek over at Social Triggers has turned me on to these three concepts. He says, as smart as we human beings are, we can't resist certain urges. And three of those urges are as follows. One, people can't resist following the gaze of other people. Two, people can't resist seeing where an arrow points. And three, people can't resist following the line of sight of objects. 
In this first example, you can see that the people are looking towards the opt-in area, which instantly draws your eyes over to that spot on the page. They also make it very clear through the design that all you have to do is enter your email address, then click the button. Next, people not being able to resist seeing where an arrow points is also very true. Granted, using arrows is about as subtle as a punch in the face, it also visually tells your visitor to ignore everything else and look here. You can see this quite a bit on Facebook landing pages to call attention to the like button. Also, email marketers will use this to draw attention to the opt-in form on their website. People not being able to resist following the line of sight of objects is also very true. In Derek's article on social triggers, he shows this image of a baby looking at the headline, then points out that the baby's chin also acts as a subtle arrow to the rest of the text. When the same image was run through eye tracking software, a study found that a viewer's eyes were first naturally drawn to the baby's face, then followed his gaze to the headline, then moved in sort of an F pattern towards the call to action. Mega affiliate marketer Ryan Dice has also found that heavy use of line of sight in natural reading patterns has become one of his top converting landing page designs. In this example, he shows a strong headline, then an image of the product right next to it, then he interrupts your eye pattern with an opt-in box, brings your eye to the right side of the page with a video and then image, and then brings it all the way down to the bottom of the page with another opt-in box. Whoa, that's a lot to take in. Yeah, it sure is. There's a whole segment of the market that's dedicated to landing page optimization because there's a lot that can go into the design of a high converting landing page. And the final thing about landing page design is that you should always be testing. If you feel like another design is going to work better, test them against each other to see which one will work best. Now, if you're like most people, you're on your own. So I've included all of the resources I've used in this video in the description so you can go and read up on more in your own time. Thanks. All right, that's all we got for today's episode of Inside the Mind. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. Please be sure to like this video and favorite it for easy viewing. And if you have a question, please leave a video response by clicking on my face or asking in the comments below. And subscribe if you want to be the first to know when the next video comes out.